Hey boys, welcome back to the channel and boy oh boy, it feels good to be back making a discussion video on Origin after we get a triumphant victory. Oh, it feels, it feels very good, dude. <laughs> There's such a difference between going to bed after losing an Origin game and going to bed winning one. It's, it's, uh... It's crazy, dude. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's go through this game. We'll, we'll, I'll talk about the players, the matchups, how I think they went. Obviously, Queensland got the victory, and I will say, again, I want to preface everything by saying I am a Queenslander, so I am going to be biased. <laughs> I am going to be biased, so just take everything I say with a grain of salt. If you're a New South Wales fan. Um, but honestly, dude, eighteen fourteen. I don't actually think it really reflects the game. Um, I actually think Queensland were, were far better than New South Wales for the, for the majority of the game. Um, and I think the Blues were a little, not, not like lucky. They didn't get like lucky calls, but I, I, I think they were just a little bit fortunate to get, to get back to eighteen fourteen. um, you know, Queensland were well on top, and, you know, if that Jaden Sewell little flick pass to Gagai scoring in the corner, I mean, the game would have been over then and there, but, uh, it, you know, the last couple of minutes got pretty tense, for sure, um, but let, let's go through the, the team list here, so James Tedesco v Brimson, pretty good matchup, um, I know some, some people are criticizing Tedesco, I don't really know why, I mean, it probably wasn't his absolute best game he's ever played, but I thought he was... I thought he was his usual, you know, his usual menacing best. Um, you know, plenty of carries, plenty of run meters, tackle bus. You know, he was the one guy that every time he touched the footy, you were always a little bit, always a little bit nervous. Um, he didn't, you know, didn't have the the impact that you would hope. And I mean, that mainly comes down to the halves. We'll talk about later, but. I think as a whole, Tedesco was still still very good. A couple a couple of errors in the first half, but other than that, he was pretty safe and yeah, always uh, always a threat. On the flip side, AJ Brimson. I mean, I I predicted it that he would play well, and he he sure did. And I, I said I said in the preview that he is very similar to James Tedesco, just the way he bobs up around the field, plenty of carries. Not the not the biggest bloke like Tedesco, but he's. He's powerful, he's quick, he's powerful, he bounces out of tackles, not afraid to take those tough carries, and he scored, oh man, that, that try he scored was just an absolute belter, obviously set up by the, the man Kurt Capewell, but Brimson, he's just, oh, he's just always on the footy, he played an exceptional debut, um, definitely up there for, for player of the match with a couple others, but yeah, fantastic debut. Obviously, the big news coming out is that he's going to be gone for the rest of the season, dude. I'm so sad about that. Um, yeah, disaster. Honestly, obviously, Holmes is going to come back into the team, but damn, that's a shame. <laughs> AJ Brimson played such a good game, dude. He deserved to be there for the rest of them, but, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to next year with the Titans, and uh, yeah, he, he's just an absolute class player. Um, going on to the wingers here, Xavier Coates v. Daniel Tupo. I, uh, in the preview, I definitely would have thought Tupo had the, uh, had the advantage here. I still, I, I mean, Xavier Coates, I think he, he had a good debut. I mean, he was safe as houses. I don't really think he came up with many errors or if any. Obviously scored a try and debut, did a good job there to skip out of Tupo. Um, took, you know, took plenty of carries, did the hard stuff. I still... I still think there were better options. I, I still I still think why was Ronaldo Molotalo not in the team? But I mean Xavier Coates I mean he's a future star, so I, I don't you know, you can't you can't you can't go against Wayne. Wayne knows what he's doing. <laughs> and Xavier Coates getting some experience. Hopefully this is gonna be good for the Broncos next year, because you know, <laughs> hopefully he will go to the next level. Um and yeah, he he played a solid game. Can't can't fault him. Daniel Tupo, he was I don't know. I mean, Tupo, you got to say he had a bit of a poor game. I mean, he took a lot of tough... I mean, he did what he does. He did a lot of tough carries, uh, makes plenty of ground, always hard to handle. But, I mean, he came up with one a huge error uh, that led to the Queensland try. And he just didn't have the, the impact you would expect. I mean, up against the debutant and Xavier Coates, I feel like it was a, a pretty, a, you know, a pretty solid matchup. And... Uh, he, he didn't get any anything over on, on Coates, so 
it's got to be said i mean i was i was i thought to, uh, tupo should have got picked i think he's been one of the form wingers for a while now but yeah didn't uh i don't know and it's been like that in like the last time he played origin he was in in, in amazing form but he just I don't know, is he one of these guys who just can't take his game to the next level? Maybe. Um, he's never really shown his his form in, in the Origin arena, but um, yeah, a bit, bit of an off night uh, for Daniel Tupo. The centers, oh, this is where it gets... This is where it gets a little nasty for the New South Wales viewers. If you want to switch off now, I, I don't uh, I don't fault you because it got a little rough. It got a little rough. So first off, Dane Gagai... Uh, it's got lined up here, Clint Gutherson, but obviously Gagai up against Jack Wyden. And going into it, I mean, you would think that this would be a good matchup for... Uh, I don't know. I, I probably thought it would be a bit of a, a sort of an even contest. Uh, Jack Wyden, usually very, very strong defensively, a strong ball carrier. Dane Gagai, very similar, very strong ball carrier, strong defensively. But Dane Gagai, he just goes to another level in Origin. And I do want to say, I do get a little bit frustrated. People seem to act like Gagai out of Origin is not a very good player, which is complete BS. <laughs> Dane Gagai is still a very good club player. Um, he just he just goes to another level at Origin time. And I don't know, people might be like, why doesn't he play like that every week? Um, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's a different kettle of fish. I mean, in club footy... You 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 gotta do your role in in Origin. He he just he just tries to do everything. He, he's a he's a guy. He's the he's the epitome of Queensland. You know, Queensland have, have always been a team where they bring in guys that other other New South Wales fans or even Queensland fans might look at and be like, he's not a very good player. Like, why are they picking him? But they just they they have pride in their jersey. They they want to win as, as much as anything in the world. So Dane Gagai just outstanding. I gotta say, it was, I mean the player of the match for me was out of Gagai, Capel, and Brimson. I gotta say Gagai was the player of the match. I mean he was he was absolutely faultless. He did not make a mistake. He dismantled Jack Whiten. Um, just. Yeah, made made Wyden look embarrassed, honestly. Uh Wyden had a couple I mean, Wyden he had a he looked dangerous in attack at times, but I mean, yeah. He he just got destroyed by Gagai. I I and and then on the flip side we have Capel up against Gutherson. And going into this one, you would probably be like Gutherson should have the the advantage here, you know, he's he's a backline player. Obviously, he's out of position, but he has played wing. He played wing for Manly, obviously a fullback now. But up against Capel, you would think he would have a bit more speed, a little bit more footwork. But dude, Capel, I love Capel. I I, I always thought he should be in this team. Um, you know, I I thought it's, thought he should be as a utility player if they had all their backline players in. But him coming into the starting side, I wasn't like disappointed. I mean, I. <laughs> Honestly, Branko Lee, I would have been happy to be there anyway, but Kirk Capel, I knew he would add, like, that starch in defense. Um, you know, he's a big body, he's strong, he put on some good hits, and he's just got he's just got something about him. He always showed the class in, like, Queensland Cup. He just has good footwork, he's got a good offload, and he's taken his game to the next level. Obviously, he didn't get too many chances with the Panthers this year just because... He was out injured for a good chunk of the start, and then obviously the Panthers were on fire, so it was sort of tough for him to crack the side, but I've, I've been a huge fan of Cable for a long time, and wow, he played he played out of his skin. Um, I mean, I talked about it before, but the try he set up, that that goes down as one of the greatest tries you'll ever see, dude. It was, it was incredible. The move he put on Gutherson, the kickback on the inside, I mean, it was, it was remarkable. It was incredible, dude. And Gutherson on the flip side, I actually think, I mean, everyone's criticizing Gutherson, um, which he definitely deserves. Um, but I feel like Jack Wyden has been a little bit uh, let off the hook. <laughs> I actually think Gutherson was probably better than Wyden for the most part. Gutherson obviously came up with that terrible defensive play on Cape Wall, but Jack Wyden was getting embarrassed by Gagai the whole night. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think they were both pretty poor in defense. And uh, and obviously, the one thing, though, and the one the one reason I wouldn't say Capel 
deserved player of the match was, you know, New South Wales caught him out a couple of times in a, in attack. Um, and it comes back to the halves again. Like, Capel playing on playing in the centres, he's more of a, you know, he's a back rower. Um, and they found him out a couple of times, and they just didn't go back to him. I mean, you just go back, you're looking like a Lockyer, a Thurst, and a Cronk. If they knew, like, Capel was out in the centres, they would keep peppering him. Obviously, very strong one-on-one defensively, but he's not used to playing centre, making the decisions, and obviously... Against the speed of a Tedesco coming around the back, he does he doesn't have the pace to match him. So yeah, the Blues missed a trick with not targeting Capel more on that edge. Like they they scored a couple of tries and then, I mean they scored one early and then didn't really go back to him. And then they obviously scored one late when he was uh, injured. But yeah, the Haas missed a trick with not going down his side more. Um, and also one. <laughs> Going back to Dane Gago for a second, I just remembered to talk about this. The try he set up to uh, to Xavier Coates was one of the... I, I know I just said the Capel try was one of the greatest tries. That Dane Gago try, I, I don't think people realize how good he played that. Obviously, the, the big palm off Widen, the dummy, the show and go to beat Tupo. And then the work he did in the backfield was honestly incredible, dude, because... <laughs> The the ten points behind, huge pressure. You're in the backfield. You're trying to score this try. There's there's New South Wales players coming from ev- everywhere. On the inside, I think it was Cherry Evans and someone else. And you would think just drawing past Tedesco back on the inside, but Tedesco was already sort of backing away. New South Wales players were coming from the inside, and then Dane, Dane Gagai just he knew Xavier Coach was going to be there. He just sort of. Just the way he played it, it was it was honestly incredible. The way he st- he just stopped Tedesco because Tedesco in those situations comes up with some miracle defensive plays, but he was able to take out the inside defense. He was able to take out Tedesco and just set up Xavier Coates. It was it was incredible. <laughs> I can't, dude. It was one of the greatest solo um, setup tries I've ever, I've ever seen. He played it so well. <laughs> he played it so well. It could have easily not been a try because there was, there were Blues defenders coming from everywhere and he just, he just made the right decision. Um, and then the other winger here, Philip Sammy v. Adokar. I mean, Adokar, I would say he was their best player. Um, he came up with some big defensive plays, scored, um, he scored two, tri- uh, two tries. Yeah, scored, scored two tries. Uh, look, look dangerous every time he touched it, and yeah, I mean, Adokar has been probably, he's probably been the best winger for a couple of years now, he's, uh, yeah, I- incredibly good, I thought Philip Sammy was pretty solid on debut, he did get found out a couple of times, but again, like Xavier Coates, he was solid, didn't come up with, uh, many errors, um, you know, took a lot of tough carries, did his job, and I thought, you know, for Adokar, uh, Adokar's experience and class and defending with Capewell on his inside, a new combination and a, a second role playing there. I thought Philip Sammy did a, a pretty good job under the circumstances for sure. Uh, then we move into the halves and the halves, oh geez, they're, they're copping a battering here. And I've, I've got to be honest, dude, like obviously New South Wales have lined the last couple of seasons, uh, last couple of series, but it's never really been their halves. Like, I've got to... <laughs> it's got to be said, I I honestly think Cameron Munster and Cherry Evans have been the better halves pairing for the last couple of years. Um, and the Blues halves are just sort of... You know, they've gone through the motions, but they've, they've won games on the back of, primarily, Damian Cook, James Tedesco, and Tom Trebojevic, probably. They're, they've been the three guys that have sort of just turned it on. The halves have never really... I, I just don't think the halves for the Blues have really played that well for the last couple of years. But they have won. I mean, I, you know, you can't take it away. They have won the last couple of seasons. Why do I keep saying seasons? Last couple of series. So there is that. But I feel like this game was fairly typical of the way they've they've been playing. Um, just not really, not really working together. Not really doing that much in attack, just sort of giving it to Tedesco, waiting for him to do something. If Latrell Mitchell was in the team, they would give it to him, wait for him to do something. It's it's just been a bit like that. And, uh, you know, they've had the players and Queensland have been a bit lacking over the last couple of years. So it, it's worked, but 
um, this game it did not. And yeah, Luke Keery I thought was okay. I mean, a couple of times he took the line on, he looked a bit dangerous, but I mean, he didn't really get involved too much. And then Nathan Cleary for the halfback, the form halfback of the comp, I just, yeah, just did not have a good game, um, really at all. I, I, I don't think he, he did much of anything, honestly. His kicking game wasn't even that good. Um, yeah, not, not, not too much to really talk about there. And then on the flip side, uh, Cherry Evans, I thought he was pretty awful in the first 20 minutes. <laughs> Because Queensland obviously had all the footy and all the good field position in that first uh, first 20 minutes, and Cherry Evans he came up with a few a few bad errors. Um, the the prime the biggest one was where they had this massive overlap. All he had to do was find a man or probably just kick it because Adokar Adokar was literally standing in there attacking line, you just have to kick it, <laughs> just kick the damn thing, and he threw it straight to him. So Cherry Evans was a little bit. I don't know. I think because they had that possession, they were a little bit flustered. They were they were trying to score points, um, a little bit clunky. And Cherry Evans was, um, yeah, just a bit out of sorts. But he definitely the light, you know, the second half primarily, he really took the game on. Honestly, his running game was really really good. He's uh, he's deceptively a very good runner of the footy. Like he doesn't, I feel like he doesn't run the footy as much as he should at like at Manly, because he's, he's pretty, he's pretty good, um, he's got good footwork, he's got good strength, uh, so, yeah, he, he, he ran the ball a lot in, uh, in this game, and, and caused, caused the Blues some headaches, and then Cameron Munster, I mean, he's just, dude, my comment still stands, my preview, I said Munster is easily the best 5'8 in the game, and, I think that's fairly uh, fairly justified. Cameron Munster is far and away the best 5'8 in the game, dude. Um, defensively, extremely strong. Every time he touches it, he, he causes havoc. Uh, he just, yeah, you just want him to touch the ball as much as possible, dude. Um, and all, I, <laughs> so I keep, I keep going off topic here, but the one thing about the centers for the Blues that I forgot to mention was that I'm so happy because Fittler in the past couple of years has been seen as this this gift to New South Wales and this absolute genius of a coach. And I've just been shaking my head at some of his decisions. But they paid off. And the fact that he played... The fact that he played Gutherson and Wyden in the centres for this game when they have Stephen Crichton and Zach Lomax sitting in the squad, it just baffled me, dude. Um... And I'm glad that he's uh, he's been found out, and and everyone now is like on his case. But I mean, you know, in last year's series, primarily, you know, he played Tom Trebojevic in the centres, but that isn't a genius move. Obviously, you would play Tom Trebojevic in the team wherever he fits. Tom Trebojevic is a superstar, so <laughs> they're acting like, oh, he's picked Tommy out of position. It's a bit risky, but geez, it it was such a bold move. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't at all. It was a very simple decision, um, but this one was just just nonsense. Clint Gutherson and Jack Wine in the centres? Yeah, don't know about that one. Uh, then we move on to the forwards, where honestly, I think uh, I think the Blues forwards were, were pretty good in general. I think their front rollers were definitely pretty good. Daniel Saifidi, Junior Paulo. Paulo making his debut. He, he probably... I mean, his first stint was good. You know, he came up with with a few offloads. I didn't really... I mean, the second half, Queensland just dominated so convincingly that I didn't really see too much Apollo in the second second stanza. So, you know, out of these guys, I think Daniel Saifidi was probably the probably the pick of their, their forwards. I, I think he had the most go forward. He was solid in defense. But, I mean, Queensland just dominated the second half. It was sort of hard to get a get a read on their their forwards in that that second stanza and then on the flip side Christian Welsh uh I mean he was strong 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 in his limited game time obviously he went off uh, a bit earlier than expected with a a head knock um but yeah Christian Welsh just just such a good player dude um yeah quality quality front rower pretty underrated for sure and then Josh Papali uh, you know, it wasn't one of his absolute barnstorming nights, but I think he, he matched it with their, their front rollers. Um, 
you know, plenty of go forward, tough in defense. He did, he does what he always does. Then the dummy Haas, uh, Jake Friend. Um, honestly, the fir- <laughs> the first op- or the first half, probably in in general, I thought Jake Friend. I was a little bit concerned. I I, I thought he was looking a little bit. Uh, found out in the first half but again like the second half they they really just they played better <laughs> they just played so much better jake friend sort of came into his own uh i thought he was i thought he was pretty good i don't think he was incredible but i thought he did a good job on debut and you know he did his job he played 80 minutes i was surprised that ben hunt didn't give him a spell but you know obviously bennett had another plan for ben hunt coming on as that sort of second 5-8 or, you know, another back row, basically, option, um, and then Damien Cook, I thought, Cook was, Cook was pretty good, um, yeah, I mean, every time, like, it was sort of either, in the second half, it was only really either Cook or Tedesco that you thought could really break the game open, so, yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, Cook did his job. I thought he was pretty solid without, again, being spectacular. Um, and, the, you know, it comes down to Queensland. I thought their defense was really, really good. Didn't really let Cook run right. And that that's a good way to stop New South Wales is not letting Cook gain the advantage, basically. Uh, the back row, Boyd Cordner, um, you know, a fairly, yeah, I don't know what to say about Cordner. I, I honestly don't think Cordner should have been selected. Uh, I don't even think his form's been that good. I mean, I know he's the captain of New South Wales and he's won the last two series, but I really don't think he's been in that good of form. He's been out with head knocks and then he, he copped another one during the game. They brought him back, which is obviously copped, you know, there's been talk about that. So, yeah, I don't know. A bit of a, obviously a bit quiet night, a bit of a quiet night for Cordner. Didn't really seem too much in attack. Defensively, always strong, but yeah, not not one of his not one of his most memorable nights, that's for sure. And it will be interesting to see what happens in the next two games. Like I, I don't know, dude. I mean, he's definitely going to want to play. So I mean, if the doctors don't rule him out, then I guess he will. But I don't know. Is, is Fitler going to drop him or not drop him? But is Fitler going to say no? Don't play the rest of the series. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, Tyson Frizzell, honestly, again, I, I just, <laughs> I didn't really see much of Frizzell. He did, I, I, he must have gone off. Like, he definitely didn't play 80 minutes, but I didn't even, I didn't even really realize when Frizzell left the field. Again, just didn't, didn't really have the impact in, in attack. Uh, he was solid, but just, just didn't really have the, have the impact you would expect from from Frizzell. And I mean, his form, his form again for the Dragons hasn't been great. So it's not a huge surprise. And then Jake Trebojevic, I mean, Jake does what he does. He, he was very strong in defense. Uh, didn't really create much in attack like he, like he can. Um, again, I, th- I thought he was a bit underwhelming. Um, and I still think, obviously, we'll talk about Cameron Murray in a sec, but Cameron Murray is far and away a better lock in my opinion obviously Jake Trebojevic is a great player as well but I I, I do think Cameron Murray is a, is a better player so I you know obviously it's sort of a mute point now because Cameron Murray has gone but I definitely would have started with with Cameron Murray um and Jake off the bench maybe as a as a prop uh but yeah, I thought he was solid. He was solid without doing too much. Uh, and then for Queensland, Felice Kafusi. I thought Kafusi was exceptional. I mean, some of his defense was just, yeah, really good. I mean, he he's the guy that always leads the the you know the defensive line. He's always up in their face, putting on good hits, uh, making his tackles, getting through a mountain of work. Always putting uh, who was he up against? Kiri, I think. Always putting Kiri under pressure. He was just. Yeah, always, always good. Felice Cafusi, one of the most underrated forwards in the, in the game. Like, he's he's one of the best back rowers going around. Um, doesn't really get talked up too much, but he's uh, he's a good player. Uh, Cohen Hess, I, <laughs> um, even after that game, I, I'm still scratching my head as to why Cohen Hess was selected. Because Queensland looked so much better when Jaden Sewer came on the field. Uh, it's... I mean, I'm, I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know why Wayne Bennett selected Cohen Hess, mate. I, uh, dude, I, I, I honestly have no idea. Um, 
because James Sewer is an 80-minute player. Maybe, you know, his debut, Wayne might have thought Jaden doesn't quite have it in him to, to have the intensity for full 80 minutes. Maybe he wanted him more as an impact player, but... I mean, he went on, like, after 30-odd minutes, played the rest of the game, just absolutely killed it. So, yeah, I I don't know. I don't really understand the Cohen S, <laughs> the Cohen S selection. And then big uh, Tino Fasua Mawa Ali uh, was, was very good. He wasn't... I, you know, he didn't. Uh, he didn't dominate. He didn't. Uh, he didn't do anything too incredible. But on his debut, he was solid. Got through a mound of work. Made plenty of run meters. Matched it with the big boys for New South Wales. I thought he was. I thought he was excellent and uh, very good signs for for Queensland with some of their young forwards and very good signs for the Titans going into into next year. Definitely wasn't. Uh, Definitely wasn't overawed by uh, the big occasion. And then the the bench. So Cody Walker for the Blues. Uh, again, it's a weird one because I... Uh, I mean, Cody Walker, when he came on, he was probably the, the most attacking player. Like, he was the one guy that looked like he was going to spark something. But, I don't know, just the selection of him on the bench, it still doesn't make sense. Like, what... I, I You know... So Fittler was always going to bring him on like with 15 minutes to go and was the plan that either they were going to be in front and they wanted him to score more points or was the plan that they were going to be behind and they needed they needed Walker to get them out of trouble. I, I don't know. I don't know what the plan was. Like, I, I mean, if Kiri got injured, which everyone thought he was like in the first half, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a great selection because Cody Walker goes straight on, but I just... I don't know. I, I feel like that utility role is better suited for, for someone who can play more minutes. Uh, I don't know. It's a weird one. Honestly, I think Cody Walker probably should have been the 5'8 starting um, or Jack One. I just don't think Kiri has been in that good a form lately. But yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a weird one. I think Cody Walker deserved the spot, but I don't know, the strategy of it all just didn't really make much sense to me, I guess. Uh, Payne Haas, I thought he was was okay. I, I I actually expected a bit more from from Payne Haas. He played he played quite a few minutes, but didn't uh yeah, I don't know, it's sort of typical of his Broncos form. I mean he gets through his work and stuff, but he just he just sort of this whole year he's lacked that impact that he had in in the previous year so yeah just just out of form i mean the broncos out of form pain hearts a bit out of form it uh unsurprising uh cameron murray i mean <laughs> as a queenslander you hate to see a player get injured i mean i love cameron murray but you know it was it was pretty beneficial for queensland that cameron murray didn't play any more than a couple of seconds because he was sort of there i mean he's definitely their x factor coming off the bench um and without Cameron Murray, they just lost, you know, they lose a lot of that rock speed. They lose a lot of their footwork because you look at their forward pack. It is very, it's very big. It's a big forward pack. It's not really mobile. I mean, Tyson Frizzell is quick, but he's not, he's not a real guy with footwork. He's, he just charged at the line. Um, and, and Cameron Murray was definitely that guy with, with some footwork. He's got a bit of ball skills. Uh, gets the quick play the ball. So without Murray, they really lost a lot of their a lot of their go forward. Um, and then Angus Crichton, I yeah, I, again I didn't. Um, I I was expecting Crichton to have a big a big game with obviously Cordner going off with a head knock and then Cameron Murray uh, getting injured. I thought Crichton was going to play big minutes, but again I didn't really see much of him. I mean he made a lot of tackles, but didn't really see too much of him in attack and he's another guy that you would <laughs> you would think like he is a quality player and you know if you're going to put him against like Lindsay Collins Jai Arrow you would probably say he's a much better player but I, he didn't have the impact of those two guys so yeah I don't know a bit disappointing from uh from Crichton off the bench and then the the Queensland bench was just it was, it was huge. The Queensland bench changed the game, honestly. Um, ben Hunt, um, he he was excellent. I mean, Ben Hunt is criticized a lot. <laughs> He's always criticized. Um, people thought he shouldn't have been in the Queensland team. I definitely thought he should be 
in the Queensland team. I know I said before that I would have liked Brimson to be the utility, and I still think if everyone was fit like Ponga, uh, Holmes, everyone was in the team, I still think Brimson would be a perfect utility. But in this situation, Ben Hunt is is literally your perfect 14. He can come on at dummy half. He can play in the back, you know, at lock. He can play in the halves. He's just versatile. He's strong. Uh, very creative. I mean, he 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 changed the game. Like he he just added that spark. Uh, and you don't you don't lose too much in defense. Like he's not a big body, but he's he's tough. He gets in there, does the hard work, and he he was a game changer for the for the Queensland team once again. I mean, he was excellent last year at dummy half, and uh, yeah, he's he's a guy like Gagai. I guess he just he just plays better at Origin level for some people, but. Uh, yeah, very, very good. Lindsey Collins, again, another one that would, that stood up. He was he was huge. He, again, like he he had so much more impact off the bench than Payne Haas, Angus Crichton. Um, just just yeah, really, really good. Very strong in defence, and he is he's a guy for the future. He is he is an absolute machine, Lindsey Collins. Um, Jai Arrow, he was <laughs> Jai Arrow, dude, like. Coming on the bench, coming off the bench, you obviously can't get player of the match. But he's, in my mind, he's way up there for for player of the match. He was, yeah, again, the offloading, the tackle breaking, defensively, he absolutely belted Clint Gutherson. Oh, that was a shot, dude. That was a shot and a half. Uh, but yeah, Jai Arrow, just incredible. And I still think. You know, Wayne Bennett obviously knows a lot more about football than me, but I still think Jai Arrow probably should have started um, at Lock and Tino off the bench. But I mean, it worked. It worked well like this as well. I mean, Jai Arrow has huge impact. He's he's one of the best forwards running around. Has, hasn't had the best year at, at at the Titans, but still an incredibly good player. And then Jaden Sewer on debut. I was I was very excited to see Sewer, and honestly, he didn't disappoint. He came out with some huge hits. Uh, in attack, he's he's deceptively quick. Uh, he almost got that freakish try to Gagai, skipping around Luke Keary. And just, yeah, excellent debut. And I still, going back to this Cohen Hess thing, for the next game, I don't know if Wayne Bennett's going to change anything because they obviously won. But honestly, like, Jaden Sewer should be starting in the back row. Cohen Hess dropped out of the team. And either Pat Carrigan or Mo Fodawaker should come in. That would make the team so much stronger. I, I don't. I still just don't understand why Cohen Hess was selected, dude. When you got Mo Fodawaker and Pat Carrigan, who who both have had ex- outstanding years for their for their clubs. I I don't know. It's the one. It's the one selection that I'm still just scratching my head at at why, honestly. Um, but but yeah, there, there's my discussion. Um. It's gone on for quite a while because I do like to ramble. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Queensland, like I said at the start, just reiterating, I think Queensland were the far better team for the full 80. Um, the scoreline, I think, flatters New South Wales a little bit. Um, I, you know, the second half, just Queensland just absolutely dominated them. It was only like the last couple of minutes that it looked like New South Wales could do something um, and snatch a miraculous victory but yeah Queensland were, were excellent um you know a lot of their no-name players really stood up a lot of the superstars for New South Wales didn't show up so yeah it was it was a good Queensland uh effort for sure so hopefully you guys are enjoying the uh the origin discussions I know New South Wales fans will be unhappy but uh you know You've had you've had a good last couple of years, so hopefully this is this is Queensland's turn. You, you can't get you can't get as many as Queensland got. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Who who were your standout players? Who let you down? But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.